the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So this week, we have kind of a listener thingy going on here. We have Gene Steinberg, J. Randall Murphy, known as Usual Suspect in our forums, and Lou Sheehan, who's been a longtime listener and participant in our forums. And we made the opportunity available, and he was sucked in somehow. Lewis, welcome to the PowerCast. Well, thank you, Gene. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. I think it's good to have a history lesson for all of our participants how we got involved. I've told my story a thousand times. Randall has told his story. What got you involved in studying these things? You know, I want to say it started way back with Eric Von Denneken's Chariots of the Gods when I was very young. Then probably for 20, 30 years, it lay dormant. And I stumbled across a show on TV. It was Bill Burns' show, UFO Hunters. And actually, and I hope I don't insult Bill, the first show I thought was ridiculous. I thought it was so bad, I wanted to watch the next one. But the next one caught my caught my attention. And from there, I just kept following following the subject. I think it's a potential game changer. I think that's why it's of interest to me in particular. How the game could be changed, I can't say with any certainty, but you can imagine the various possibilities, whether for good or ill. And that's why it's of interest to me, something I think is profoundly important. Have you ever personally had a weird experience? I have not. And that's the funny thing. So, uh, you know, I I can't say that I have. Uh, It doesn't mean I, I... you know, obviously, it gives me an added level of skepticism, but and maybe I'm naive. But when I hear testimony regarding bent waters, or for that matter, the Allagash abductions, or or some others, it's hard for me to discount so many quality witnesses. Take, for example, Leslie Keen's book. Um, chapter after chapter, and in her case, she just focused on generals and pilots. And there's a lot of quality sightings. I think it's worth my time and attention paying attention to it. And given all the effort to discount it, if anything, that heightens my suspicion that there's something there. So I'm afraid I haven't had any any actual experiences. Well, tell me yours, actually. I don't recall your first one other than your brother placing a book near you. I think you said you've seen a few. Is that correct? A little more complicated than that. We'll go to the book in a moment. I'm not sure whether he did it deliberately, or, but I kind of think... He had to because it never happened again and hadn't happened before. And he knew I was interested in sci-fi and stuff. The experience we're talking about here is, I don't know, I was 8 to 10 years old, living in Brooklyn, New York. I'll tell you the address. You can look it up on Google Earth, 102 Newport Street. And the reason I mention is this was a brownstone four-family tenement. And when we lived there, it wasn't a new house. It had to be 20, 25 years old. It has been completely rebuilt. It looks almost like new, and I get the impression here that if you wanted to rent that place today, you'd be spending $2,500 a month for a two-bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. So they've Uh, done a lot of that. A lot of places in Brooklyn are totally unaffordable. All right, so at night I was getting these recurring dreams, and to frame it, around the corner there was a building with a large dark canopy. In my dreams I'd see this huge canopy or something, this huge dark thing coming closer and closer getting more and more frightening, and I wake up in a cold sweat. And this happened for a while, almost every night. And I don't know whether I interacted with my parents or my brother, who was still living at home at the time. I don't remember that. I don't remember whether I did or not. I know that eventually it disappeared. Also, around that period, I constantly was smelling something around me, the odor of burnt sulfur which anyone following John Keel's exploits in his books knows signifies something. This recurring dream vanished, never happened again. I was 11 years old. My brother lived in an apartment with his first wife on Carroll Street in Brooklyn. It was a short walk from Ebbets Field. This was, I think, after the Brooklyn Dodgers left Brooklyn, but, you know, just to give you a framework. Their first apartment. He was at work. My mom and I came over, and then on the coffee table was a copy of Flying Saucers from Outer Space by Major Donald Kehoe. And I have no idea why he left it there, if not knowing that I was going to be over. Otherwise, it made no sense. He didn't seem to have much of an interest in the subject before or since. 
but I read the book and I was hooked. And now, 400 years later, here I am. So that's my story, Lou. You know, if I may ask, what was Mosley's introduction to the topic? Why was, I know you, you go back away. So may I ask why he was so interested in the topic? Jim was a lot older and he was in his early 20s and late teens when the subject first hit the national wires. So he read those stories, the early UFO reports. Okay. And as I recall, the reason he got involved with what he called Nexus Magazine, which became Saucer News, was because he had made a deal with somebody to do the legwork for a UFO book. This is like 1953, 1954. So he drove around the United States and interviewed all the people involved in UFO research at the time. And he put those notes together. Some of that ended up in a book that Gray Barker kind of wrote for him, but heavily edited. Other parts of it ended up in the book he wrote with Carl Flock called Shockingly Close to the Truth in the early 2000s. So that's isn't that where interesting, that, isn't it? I remember having the notes for a while because he typed them up, but I assume I gave them back to him. Anyway, there was a story about that, and it's a story that we've told on the Powercast before, where in the course of all that, he visited Project Blue Book headquarters. Yeah, go ahead. And right. if you recall the story, he was allowed to type any report that they had available for public consumption. Sitting there. He typed up as many as he could. They had a typewriter there. He got paper and he typed. I don't know how many hours or days he spent getting his material. Now, up to that point, the Air Force had also been talking to Major Donald Kehoe for the books he wrote. But I gather if you read the books, most of the stories he got were given to him verbally, in person or over the phone. When he learned that Jim had received those reports, he blew a fuse yelled at them, and they no longer would allow anyone to just come in and type the reports down because Keo raised and a ruckus. Why would he do that? Why would he raise a ruckus? Is there a suspicion? I'm sorry. I think because of the fact that he thought that Jim got access to something he didn't get access to, but it was I just see. a matter of going in there and doing what Jim did. Jim did nothing special. He was nobody special in the field. He was just a guy interested in the subject, and they were being courteous. Of course, Major Kehoe not being courteous didn't get him anything. Just as simple as that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Kehoe that well. I mean, I've only, I saw, I saw him on YouTube on an interview with Mike Wallace. He seemed professional there. I mean, his reaction to Jim Mosley doesn't sound at all professional or helpful or like a team player. Um, so do you have impressions of Kehoe? I met Kehoe, I think, three times. I Go met ahead. him at NICAP headquarters. And I didn't realize at the time that NICAP, this major UFO research organization of which he was director, was mostly run by the in-office staff. At that time, it was Richard Hall. Okay. And Kehoe lived out in Luray, too. Virginia, okay. which was, I don't know, about 90 miles from D.C. And he'd come in a few times a week and check things out. He was an absentee director. I also learned okay, later, and right. Jerry Clark confirmed this in his research for the book that he wrote, the historical book he wrote on UFOs, he right. realized that Kehoe was not a very good manager and that I kept yeah, gotten financial difficulties. I think because he was a hands-off manager, that was part of it. First time I met Kehoe. Talked to him a little bit. In fact, I even volunteered as an ICAP member and I wrote up a few summaries, which I think that Richard Hall compiled for use in this book they published called UFO Evidence. So I will say I am probably in a very, very modest way one of the authors of that book. Lou Sheehan is one of our listeners in the Paracast. This week it's me and Randall Murphy. You're in the Paracast. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items. And entails t-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of t-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have 
a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. If you go to store.theparacast.com, stop by and take a shopping tour. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Fully cooked, ready-to-eat bacon. I'm talking thick, meaty, center-cut, presidential bacon. Savory and delicious. I buy some, I use some, I store some. Awesome. No refrigeration needed with a 10-year shelf life. NASA Pack technology. Bacon. Fully cooked, fully hydrated, ready-to-eat right from the pack bacon. Or warm and served. Life-saving, ready-to-eat bacon. 10-year shelf life bacon. Ships free at FullyCookedBacon.com. FullyCookedBacon.com. Are you still looking for that one iodine that you can really trust? A medical doctor endorsed product that is backed by honest research and true integrative science. Then search no further. Go to NutraMedical.com for Dr. Bill Deagle's Nutriodine, proven time and time again to be the very best iodine available for you. Nutriodine is the only Tesla activated monatomic plasma iodine in the world. It optimizes mitochondrial function and generation of new mitochondria from totally neutralized the venom from a desert recluse spider bite in Southern California to eliminating malaria parasites reported by medical missionaries in Central India. Dr. Bill's Nutriodine is simply the most powerful healing formula there is. Nutriodine clears the body of all known pathogens, restores it to an alkaline state, and even promotes stem cell regeneration. Order Dr. Bill's Nutriodine today at 888 212 8871 or visit us online at Nutramedical.com. In an emergency, you need a fire now. But what if the wood is wet? No problem for InstaFire. Our non-toxic fire starter packs, light wet wood, can even burn on water or in any weather. Sustains winds up to 30 miles per hour, and each pouch weighs only 1.75 ounces. Need an emergency stove? Get the InstaFire Inferno stove that boils water in under three minutes. Temps up to 1,500 degrees. Free shipping on anything. Go to InstaFire.com slash radio specials and get yours today. InstaFire. Fire in an instant. InstaFire.com slash radio specials. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So one of our listeners, Lou Sheehan, is joining us and questioning us. He's <laughs> now interrogating us before he interrogates me further. I should tell you that we have a second radio show called After the Paracast. It's only available if you subscribe to the Paracast Plus. The show is anything. It's off the wall. It's a continuation of an interview. It's unpredictable after the Paracast. We also offer a commercial-free version of this show. It's available to you as a subscriber for a modest monthly, annual, five-year lifetime subscription. By the way, if you spring for the lifetime in the five-year We've got free books to give away, so check those out, plus.theparacast.com, plus.theparacast.com. Lucien was asking me about my meetings with Major Donald Kehoe. So, second time, 1965, we're on a trip to Washington, D.C., myself, 
Alan Greenfield, old friend of mine from Brooklyn, Marty Salkin, and maybe somebody else. Not sure about the third person. Could have been Rick Hilberg. We all went to Luray, Virginia, met Kehoe, not in the caverns, at a diner. And we talked to him. He seemed pleasant enough. And we had some concerns about NICAP and about the UFO field. And we as young whippersnappers voiced our concerns. And Kehoe was, again, pleasant, easygoing, sincere. We then went back to NICAP. Second time I'd been there. Richard Hall sees me this time and says, you're not welcome here. Possibly the reason is I was then working with Jim Mosley at Saucer News. After that, three of the four of us already met Ray Palmer. And Ray had been pretty outspoken in his comments about the UFO field. And he ran the club news section in Flying Saucers magazine where we all got acquainted. So we called Palmer. I had Palmer's personal number and I called him. And I told him what happened. And he gave us some ideas and suggestions. And then he ran an article in Flying Saucers magazine called No Investigations Can Actually Proceed, which spells NICAP. And he explained how NICAP did some unfortunate things. Jim made a big deal of it in Saucer News Magazine. And other publications took the baton as well. Hall eventually quit NICAP. Now, I met him 10 years later at a UFO convention in Fort Smith, Arkansas. I slowly walked to him. I introduced myself. He shook my hand. I said, we got anything to talk about? He said, no. We settled our differences. He realized 10 years later he was being absurd, I guess, or that whatever happened and precipitated his anger couldn't be very important. My only regret with Richard Hall, by the way, is we didn't get in touch with him early enough. When we started the PowerCast, I would have loved to have had an interview. He was a gem. He was a gem. Sure was. A lot of quality work product. Labored away and contributed a lot to the field. Go ahead. Major Keo. Well, I'll just tell you, Hall and also John Keel both died in extreme poverty. Yeah, I knew, I knew Hall did. I didn't know Keogh did. Wasn't he retired? Not Kehoe. Major? Richard Hall, oh, John I'm Keel. Sorry. John Keel. Oh. All right. Don Kehoe, I don't know. I interviewed him there for a national supermarket tabloid, Donald Kehoe. Very nice interview. Okay. I call him the father of ufology. Some people say that Ray Palmer was really the father of ufology because he publicized the subject in the early years in Fate magazine and elsewhere. But a lot of people got their interest in UFOs then from Major Kehoe. I wrote this article. It was published in a supermarket tabloid that went out of business a few weeks later. I never got paid for it. So if I can find the manuscript somewhere, I'll run it because they have no rights to it. They didn't pay me. I mean, not that they were paying me a lot, maybe a few hundred dollars. That would have been nice to have. I'd take it even to think. Yeah. And Kehoe, again, was a nice guy. Kehoe had a decent public persona. A lot of people liked him. I mean, you could criticize things he did. I think he made a number of mistakes, and we can go into that if you like. But at the end, he seemed like a nice guy. And that's how I remember him. I, I do have some other questions. Let me get you to drill down on something. I really want to try to pin you down. What are some UFO events that convince you to remain particularly interested in this field? I don't want to hear about criticisms of MUFON or Passaggio or Good or, or other folks. I want to hear what you really like, what you really think has been enlightening and is worthy of further study. Go ahead. I think there are thousands and thousands and thousands of UFO sightings okay. that are right. compelling, that we can't explain away. We have all the stuff that we've talked about through the years, pinpoint turns. We talk about simultaneous radar and visual sightings, even though it's pretty easy to cloak, I think, a craft. So they don't care whether they're seen or not. We have people who have seen them really up close. We have all these interactions. We have possible trace evidence. So at the very beginning and end of the day, it's not about one case because one case may live or die by some level of evidence. It's the preponderance of evidence. Cases that can't be readily dismissed that say something weird is going on and wouldn't it be nice to find out what it is? Gene, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head there because uh, personally, I'm a believer, but if I were asked to prove any individual case, it, it doesn't seem possible given the evidence that we've got at hand. So we have to, at some point, say, well, what's reasonable to believe? And it just seems to me that it's not reasonable to believe that everything is the result of 
misperceptions and hoaxes and uh, mundane objects. If you do your homework on it, it just doesn't seem reasonable. Well, the thing you also have to realize here is that some cases still fall apart. I think Roswell has fallen apart really big time. Not that something didn't happen there. But when you have someone like Kevin Randall, who's been after Roswell for 30 years and finally comes up with this book, Roswell in the 21st Century, where he looks at it as a cold case and decides, you know what? Some of this evidence is not as strong as I thought it would be, especially the possibility of aliens being seen in connection with this alleged crash spaceship. So his end up story is something happened there. We haven't explained it. It doesn't necessarily mean it's UFOs, spaceships, whatever. Something happened. We could look at Body Snatchers in the Desert, the book from Nick Redfern, as a failed experiment. A lot of things were happening in the late 40s and early 50s that may relate to testing and development of stuff, technology first retrieved from the Nazis during World War II. And the fact we don't see it anymore may indicate to me very little of it worked very well. I guess except the V-2 rocket, which became the progenitor of all our rocket ships since then. I know Roswell's a bit noir of this particular program. I've heard repeatedly they just, we don't like to hear about it anymore. But I think what resurrects the case, at least for me, and I'm sorry if I get the man's name wrong, but was it Regeer, the man who analyzed the photographs? You actually had an interview with him. Ron Regeer. Ron Regeer. He's an engineer with some really stellar qualifications. He acquired photographs from somewhere in Texas, I think University of Texas, fill in the blank, I don't remember the town. He had the original sent to him, he blew them up and he analyzed the photos. I don't know if the word would be compelling, but it's it's dramatic. Trying to fill in those blanks, it's very suggestive when you see the word disk, when it's denied that there's a disk. Uh, you see that transport, transporting something to... Uh, uh, another town in Fort Worth, I believe it was, in Texas. And the reason I mention this is because balloons, they would just rot in the sun when they came down. Listener Lou Sheehan joins us, and he's interrogating Gene and Randall. You're in <laughs> the Paracast. <laughs> For listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. You've heard the phrase, you are what you eat? Not true. Actually, you are what you can absorb. So if the vitamins and supplements you now take are not being absorbed, what good are they? Introducing Protovite, proprietary liquid system that allows premium quality nutrients to positively affect the blood in an astonishing five minutes. Watch our amazing two-minute live blood cell video at TrueHealthFacts.com. That's TrueHealthFacts.com. Then call 502-410-3411. Protovite is nutrition you can feel. Protovite is nutrition that gets in. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-557-0158. That's 800-557-0158. Again, 800-557-0158. 
Back pain doesn't take vacations. It never celebrates holidays. It's on the job 24-7 to keep your life exactly where it is, in limbo. But it doesn't have to be that way because Laser Spine Institute can help you take back your life from chronic neck and back pain. With a less than one-inch incision, our minimally invasive procedures have provided relief to over 60,000 patients with a 97% patient satisfaction rate. So get ready to stand tall and live the life you've imagined for yourself without pain. Are you or a loved one suffering from a bulging disc? herniated disc, spinal stenosis, pinched nerve, or degenerative disc disease? Call our spine care consultants now at 855-510-BACK. For a no-cost MRI review and to learn more, it's time to say goodbye to chronic neck and back pain. Call 855-510-BACK to see if laser spine surgery is right for you. That's 855-510-BACK. What have you got to lose? Laser Spine Institute, the leader in minimally invasive spine surgery. Does the current world crisis in North Korea or our domestic crisis right here in America concern you? Well, I know it concerns me. My friends over at Legacy Food Storage have solutions in the event there's the inevitable. What's the inevitable? Civil unrest, a run on your local grocery store. And here's my question to you. If this happens, how do you feed your children? How do you feed your grandchildren? Legacy Food Storage has the solutions. In fact, they can help you implement a simple plan to take care of your needs in the event of the inevitable. By calling them right now, I have authorized them to give you a special 20% discount at checkout by simply using GCN. Call 888-543-7345 or visit them at LegacyFoodStorage.com. That's 888-543-7345 or visiting them at LegacyFoodStorage.com. Make sure you use GCN at checkout for an incredible 20% discount. Don't be a victim. Take control of your life now. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So Lucian is asking me about Ron McGear's material. I'm not going to comment about it except to say he was once going to be doing a book for Richard Dolan's publishing company. I was going to ask him about that. Right. Called Another. Don't talk over me. Lou just kind of confused things. Three, two, one. A book. I think he was giving it the working title, Another Damn Roswell Book. I'm going to ask him. And if we get an answer before the show ends, I'll let you know what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. It sure looks like the photograph of. Jesse Marcel on his knees with, I, I believe, the, his commanding officer in the office trying to represent that the Roswell crash debris was a weather balloon. I've never heard anyone question the veracity of any of those representations. So what are you saying? Yeah, no, no, that's a standard photo- Roswell photograph. And I can tell you in looking at that, that that represents anything more than whatever you see than a balloon. What, but uh, the commanding officer is on is in the photograph holding a piece of paper, and I believe they blew up that piece of paper. Okay, I know what you're talking about here. Okay, that particular letter. Yeah. What does it say? And that's the yeah. area of speculation. And I think at this point, we can do all the digital interpolation we want, and maybe someday we'll see what it says. But that doesn't prove anything. It only proves he's holding some kind of memo or letter. And wouldn't we like to know what everything is in that letter? But I believe it's pretty clear that the word disc is there. The word Fort Worth is there. Uh, again, I'm trusting uh, the person who did the enhancements to not be pulling my leg, uh, which in theory could be happening. But those words are pretty clear. And why would those words be on, on a piece of paper in someone's hand when they're trying to portray a fallen a, a weather balloon as the Roswell debris? Just the circumstantial evidence of all of it suggests that it's a memo relating to the debris, and it suggests that what's in the office is not the debris that was truly found. If you specify so, disc, he may just be referring to the original story. The original story said it was a disc, it was a flying disc or something, and then they changed it, oh, it was a weather balloon. Fort Worth could be a base of operations. I don't know. The point is here is you're taking a handful of words— and trying to fill in the blanks. Yeah. I can't fill in those blanks. 
And I think we shouldn't stretch it to try to fill in the blanks unless we can really take it apart. We don't know what that memo is. We don't know what those words signify. That memo may have that memo may have nothing to do with Roswell. It may be just a memo he had in his hand about something else he has to do after he took that visit. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. There's no context. But in fact, they're dis- they're explaining Roswell at that moment, and it was a high-profile event, and it, it makes sense that he would have written material around him about that uh, that subject. Uh, you know, it's reasonable people can disagree. To me, uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of witnesses to that event or surrounding events who have not told the truth. Many who have not told the truth, which really, really hurts the story. Does that disprove that something significant happened? No. That's all I can say. I mean, again, they, when you have Jesse Marcel making these claims and you have his son making the claims that he did, there's some weight to the story. There was something significant that happened. And then you have a, again, we don't have to go into the picture. So I'm, I still have a, I have my suspicions about that case as well. And given the context, remember, recently, just recently, before then, Half Arnold uh, had seen those, was his hat, or what was his name, Arnold, who saw the flying disks in the state of Washington about that same time, a little before. So, I mean, there's a lot more to the context than might appear at first glance. So, go ahead, Gene. Okay, opinion. well, you're talking about Kenneth Arnold, about the original sighting, nine disc-shaped objects. Yeah. near Mount Rainier in Washington State, June 24th, 1947. And it came at the right time to get national publicity and thus generated the flying saucer myth or legend. Now, there were other sightings at the time, but a lot of the linchpin of this case is basically resting on Arnold's estimate of the speed. I think it was over 1,500 miles an hour. And I think if it was substantially less, it could be some kind of conventional test aircraft. I have no idea, especially if you give it a little variation in descriptions. Maybe. We don't know. The question here is, that doesn't tell us what Roswell was. It only tells us that Kenneth Arnold saw something strange, reported it, and this is one of the ways in which the flying saucer legend began. Ray Palmer got in touch with Arnold, I guess developed a friendship with him, and assigned Arnold to go to Maury Island, and we remember the Maury Island incident that was chronicled in The Coming of the Saucers that Arnold and Palmer wrote. So they were the early days of the establishment of the Flying Saucer legend. Fate magazine promoted it extensively with early coverage. So we could look at it that way, but between Roswell and Arnold, I don't know what the connection could be. Uh, Just the time. I think, what year was that? Did uh, Kenneth 47, Arnold see those? 47, yeah. And Roswell was also in 47. And then again, we were discussing discs. That's, I think, the connection, implying that there was a wave at the time. And again, it tracks back to the atomic uh, detonations in New Mexico. I don't want to dwell on this case, but I, I think the gentleman's photograph and photographic analysis uh, raises very, very compelling questions. So teach his own. And you can move on to other cases because, again, I know this is not the favorite topic of uh, the hosts of this, this show. You know, by the way, that was the episode that I saw on UFO Hunters that I thought was so weak that I just laughed and laughed, but subsequently found stronger shows and became interested in the topic. It was the Marty Island show of UFO Hunters. Uh, Bill Burns, by the way, has disappeared from the scene. Maybe you should get him back on the show and find out what he's been up to. You know, something interesting here. Good. I had some correspondence with Bill Burns a couple of years back, and I asked him to come on and talk. We all have questions. He, by the way, will deny if you ask him that he controlled some of the weird things that were done on UFO Hunters, like the editing of Chris (laughs) O'Brien's comments where something happening in the Mysterious Valley ends up being transported by the matter transporter to Sedona, Arizona. He calls it Franken editing or something, or Frankenstein editing. I don't know. So, well, he's yeah, he seems to be guilty of that with Corso's book too. Though, I mean, Burns, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, I almost dare him to come on to the show because, you know, that may be why he sort of decided to lay low a bit. 
you know, he's been, you know very much sensationalized the whole thing, and and uh, it seems to be for the purpose of gaining media exposure. Yeah, well, my, I don't my, know my, if it's that I, because I, I never thought that Bill Burns was ever afraid to answer any question. It doesn't mean whether you'd agree with the answer or not. I just don't think he was afraid. I'm going to look up as we're talking, as a matter of fact, and you're going to hear my typewriter going, my keys. Bill Burns. I'm going to look at the last time that I heard from him. And this goes back. Well, here's some letters from 2008. I know that came by later. So let's see. Bill Burns. Let's see. Okay. All right, 2009, we're getting there. And let's see, well, let's try it this way. We're trying all the search tools here using Apple's Spotlight to locate Bill Burns. And I don't see, let's just try Burns. All right, um, last I heard was two years ago. He was in the midst of doing a lot of edits on some kind of book or other. I wrote to him and have not heard anything since. So September 2015. We've got Louis Sheehan and he is interrogating Gene and Randall. You're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. North Korea openly threatens the U.S. and launches a new missile every other week. Their warhead of choice? Electromagnetic pulse. Such an event would cripple the U.S. power grid for years and leave millions in the dark. Are you ready? You can be with a Solark EMP-hardened solar generator. Solark works day in and day out to keep your essentials protected. You can have peace of mind knowing your power will be there when you most need it. Visit PortableSolarLLC.com to see EMP testing. That's PortableSolarLLC.com. Energy insurance for your family. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Are you one of the 70% of Americans that want to own your own business, afraid to leave the security of your current job to pursue your dreams? I'm Pharmacist Keith. Dr. Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, and myself want to show you a low-cost way to create your own business, working around your current job schedule, creating an extra income for you and your family by joining his crusade, spreading his message of better health. To learn more, visit radio.recordedvideo.com, radio.recordedvideo.com. That's radio.recordedvideo.com. 
Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation. Analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Want revenge on the common housefly? Well, after 10,000 years, someone has finally come up with a better way. The Bug Assault, a miniaturized shotgun, which utilizes ordinary table salt as ammunition. Non-toxic and no batteries required. $39.95 plus shipping and handling. Use discount code GCN and receive 15% off your purchase at BugAssault.com. Fire your fly swatter and get your Bug Assault today. Hi, it's Grant Cameron from PresidentialUFO.com. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Lucian has had the trial by fire. (laughs) Uh, Getting back to Bill Burns, he and his wife had a show for some time that hasn't been on since 2016, so I don't... I happen to know that Nancy is uh, publishing some books, but I don't know what Bill's been up to. I wondered if he's in the process of doing another season of UFO Hunters, but I have zero inside information. I just don't know what he's up to, and I thought maybe you would, or you would get him back on the show and uh, find out what he's been up to. You know, a vibrant aspect of the ufology community, and disagree with him or not, uh, he's an important player. Perhaps you'll have time to put him on another show. If there's a way, we will do it. I'm just doing a traditional sort of uh, check out here in Google. He appeared this year on Coast to Coast. Oh, okay. Well, I don't listen to that show. So. Okay. Well, I'm glad of that. I will contact him and I'll see. If you do get him on, I think that'd be a good show to get uh, Don Ecker in on because I think that. Didn't he take over UFO Magazine from Don? Oh, that is such a story. Okay, he takes over <laughs> UFO Magazine. I don't, you know, want to go back into everything here. Don tells the story. He took over the magazine, and Don Ecker and Vicky, you know, disengaged themselves. I don't think he feels confident that he got the best deal or that the magazine was treated in the way he expected when they took it over. At some point, they kind of gave it up, but then it's complicated because supposedly a third party owned the rights to the magazine, a production company, like a movie production company, owned the rights to UFO magazine and pulled the plug. And that's it. They tried to turn it digital, Nancy and Bill, and it didn't work. And that's the end of it. We can ask. I don't don't know if he wants to debate uh, John Ecker about it, but let's get the information. I think at the very end, what happened in part was Nancy went on hiatus to write a book for George Norrie. And so she put off publishing the magazine, which allowed the uh, subscription numbers to drop so low that the owner of the title was allowed to yank back ownership of the magazine. The owner, the true owner of the title, wanted to sell it to Open Minds, and that fell through. That's my understanding of what went on. And all of that. That's the specific of what I was talking about that was owned by a production company. Okay. Pull the plug. But what you're saying is the same as what I heard, that Nancy had her attention diverted to something else. Intentionally, only briefly. But while that happened, the other person took it, or the owners took advantage of that and, and tried to make a short-term profit, which fell through. So everybody lost the shame of it all. I don't think it was ever an intention to it was ever their intention to stop publishing that magazine. So that's where all that lays. 
Don Ecker also has a new show on another network. Perhaps you guys are aware of it. Yes, he talked about it the last time he was here. And how about Robert Hastings? I'm changing the subject. You haven't had him on since he put out his new movie. It's a short movie roughly tied to his book. His book, by the way, is much broader than his primary focus of UFOs and nukes. And it's not a, t- a subject of interest to mine, but the cattle mutilation subtopic is touched on, I noticed. As is, for that matter, uh, Mendelssohn, which may or may not have ties to nukes. I don't know. Um, it's an interesting book. I happen to have just read it recently. And I, heck, by coincidence, I also read Leslie Keene's book, an excellent book. Um, you haven't had her on for quite some time. What has she been up to? Do you know? She did a book on psychic phenomena. Very, Uh, um, if you remember, we had her on. Again, I'm going to have to look up the specific dates because after five or 600 shows, they blur in your mind. And we had her on with Erica Lukes on March 12th. And the book is called Surviving Death, A Journalist Investigates Evidence for an Afterlife. The only thing I would say is I like Leslie. I just think the title's pretentious. It's something special. I am a journalist. Okay. I just thought the title was a little bit, you know, much. We also had her on like a couple of years previous to that with Mark Rodiger. And this was with regard to something called UFO data, where they were going to create a worldwide network of UFO detectors. It's two years ago. And it doesn't look as if much was done about it. In fact, I'm going to look right now. We had him on November 2015. If you go to the ufodata.net site, it's still there. And they're looking, I guess, for a crowdfunding source. But as far as I can see, the last project update was almost a year ago. When is your book coming out? When is your book coming out, Gene? What book? (laughs) <laughs> the one that you've been thinking about all these years and haven't, haven't written yet. Well, I haven't been thinking about it that much, except that some people have suggested I take the commentaries from the Powercast newsletter and compile them into a book. I would like a third party to do that. I'm too close to some of the stories. Some are repetitive. I'm thinking here if you can get together like 40 or 50 of them together would make a reasonable size book. And I'll leave that to a third party. If anyone's interested, just let me know and take a look and tell me what we'd like to see. And we can just assemble the columns, give them a final shave and haircut and some updating and come out with a book. I'm going to ask a specific question, although um, my guess is there's no easy specific answer. But I've always been intrigued by the Bollinger Memo. Uh, where he says, let me see, reports of UFOs which could affect national security will continue to be handled through the standard Air Force procedures designed for this purpose. And then he recommends closing down Blue Book. And I'm curious why no one has really pushed that. Why has nobody tried to find out what that means and what is going on? I mean, he could just refer to uh, really Soviet uh, experimental craft but it could also be, I mean, the UFO community seems to want to interpret it more broadly. Um, I'd really like to know why that has been left to dangle out there. Any thoughts? Randall, why should you take that? Uh, well, I tried to look into that somewhat, and it turns out that some of those reports, from what I could, if I'm recalling this correctly, were sent off to the... Um, Office of Scientific Intelligence, uh, or investigation, actually. And uh, that was, I think, at that time, part of the CIA. And they had a little office that just really didn't want to be involved with it because they had too much other stuff to do. So that was kind of where the trail led me. And I couldn't follow it any further. Pretty frustrating. So, well, okay, I, that's the answer? Mm-hmm. That's that's about all that, that I know. I mean, they take reports, obviously. They go someplace. Somebody knows something, but we don't know exactly who the people are that look at the information and decide what will be done with it, the aggregate. 
sorry to leave such a, a dead dead end, but it, it's something that uh, really slaps one in the face when one reads about it. You have to wonder what's going on. Well, that takes us back to what Jean was saying. It's the preponderance of the evidence. I mean, there's so much of it out there. Do we really need to have the powers that be tell us what we already know is a point that I like to make. I think that there's enough of us out here who already know that alien visitation is a reality. We don't really need the government or skeptics or scientists to tell us that. And, you know, why the need for the verification by them for us when such a large percentage of the population already believes that that's the case? And so we're just waiting for them to make the move to make themselves accessible to us because we don't have the ability to uh, approach them. Well, I think that there are people who this, it's, they seem to need the validation. They, they want people to believe them because it's such um, an incredible thing to them. It's such a, a, a change in worldview from a view that doesn't include it, that they want to see other people validate their belief. So the focus is on getting some sort of authority to do that rather than simply accepting what we know and trying to group together to in a more united way ourselves. Like this is a problem that, that maybe, I don't know, you could provide an opinion on Lou. What, why is it that there's so many of us no, out here who do think, believe, but there's, there, we can't get it together. enough. Our listener asking us questions and engaging in discussions is Louis Sheehan, Gene and Randall Murphy. Holding Fort, you're in the Paracast. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a -a thrill-a-minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon you'll need a plan and place to survive. Forget bunkers. You're not a live underground gopher. You need survivalist camps, the ultimate fully functional off the grid mobile survival bug out house that's well equipped and custom built to outlast any other RV or trailer. Bold statement, you bet. See them now at survivalistcamps.com. That's survivalistcamps.com. Trust your family survival to survivalistcamps.com. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Let's continue. We invited Louis Sheehan, amongst other listeners, to come on the Paracast and see what happens. What happens is a very engaging discussion. Guys, you were about to get into it with each other on some topics. Go ahead. 
No, actually, I want to compliment him. That's an interesting thought, and I'm sorry if I spoke over Eugene. You know, I guess I have been wanting some sort of validation, but in fact, it's not necessary. It's just a question of waiting for them to make themselves accessible. I guess that's basically the point, because even if the government were to say, yes, uh, they are, they're there, and that, what would that really change? It wouldn't change much, would it, other than us being astounded by their honesty for a change. Other than that, I guess not much would really change. Well, I don't think that people would even believe them anyhow. That I mean, how many people <laughs> believe everything the government tells us anyway? So uh, how much validation would we really get? We would need something really definitive. We'd need pictures from the Mars rover or some uh, space probe of another craft or uh, the remnants or of a city on another planet or something like that, that that are indisputable, really. And even then there would be skeptics. People still don't believe we've been to the moon, some of them. There you so, go. Yeah. Good points. Very good points. Gene, your thoughts? Once somebody has an ironclad opinion about anything, changing that opinion is just impossible. They're going to stick to it. It could be about politics. It could be about anything. And only a small number will look at possibilities. And when they do, it's probably because they don't have a final opinion on something. So amongst all you people here, I don't know that UFOs are spaceships. Maybe they are. It could be something else. There could be an interaction between us and our environment that is culturally dependent. So I know that's an ongoing discussion, but not, not taking an ironclad opinion because when you look through strange things being seen in the skies over the centuries, you have to wonder what's going on and whether our point of view is close enough to the truth or is being overly simplistic. Or we're just interpreting it in our current understanding. We live in the Star Trek universe, therefore the things we see in the sky, on the ground, whatever, are manifested that way. And if something else takes over 50 years from now, UFOs will be that. Well, like Valet said in one of his books, I believe he says that he didn't think that there's anything more treacherous than the term unidentified. And so it really boils down to how we look at what the phenomena represents, what we mean by the word itself. So what we have is a discussion that involves sort of a fudging around of people's views about what it means in order to substantiate whatever their belief system is. And I, I prefer to go back and try to look at the historical evidence for the development of the, the word and the meanings and, and what it comes down to in terms of ufology as a field of study as opposed to sort of a personal preference or belief system. And when we go that route, then we're only left with a certain number of possibilities. And that boils down to some sort of alien craft in terms of what we mean. So, Gene, while you're absolutely right that there could be a number of explanations for the phenomena that's reported in UFO reports, that doesn't mean that what's in the reports necessarily is of a UFO or an alien craft. And I think there's a lot of confusion about that. So that's why people in the media will say, oh, a UFO, well, that just means an unidentified flying object, literally. But that's really far from the actual definition that the Air Force itself came up with, and they're the ones who developed the term. So we're kind of misled into this idea that, well, UFOs could be anything. But really, that's not the case. So you have a different view of the meaning of UFO. Well, I wouldn't say I have a different view. Well, have, you know, it was coined is... by Edward Ruppelt, and he described the process in his book, The Report on Unidentified Flying Objects. Right. And I don't see him assuming that a UFO must be a spaceship. Well, that's the whole thing. You see, they, they couldn't just come out and say that, and he knew that. And so what they did is they, they evolved the definition for reporting over a number of iterations in order to uh, sift it down and distill out from the overall reports the very specific types of phenomena that they're looking for. And when you do that, you get into something like uh, Air Force Regulation 202 from February 5th, 1958. And that goes into it in quite some detail, and it really leaves uh, no 
uncertainty about what it is they're looking for. They're, they're saying that they're looking for everything else but natural, known, man-made objects, even secret projects, and even the possibility of things that could be secret projects or secret aircraft. Those are excluded from the official definition of UFO in that regulation. So, you know, what are we supposed to see as being left over other than some sort of alien craft? You know, they, they've done everything but just come out and say it. Well, I think you can look at it that way. You can also look at it as this is a way to accommodate all possible explanations for UFOs because there isn't a category called spaceships. There's a category called unknown. If after you do the investigation, you can't find a suitable answer, you call it unknown. You don't call it spaceship. There's no category called spaceship. You can say unknown must be spaceship, but that right. also they, is debatable. They they wanted to avoid that. And of course, spaceship, well, that that's a more specific term. I mean, if we call it alien, that doesn't necessitate anything that's um, extraterrestrial. The interstellar hypothesis is reasonable, but we can't be sure that that's the case with what we know out here in the public. But what we can say is that the definitions were designed in such a way to eliminate anything but something that was really alien because that is what they were looking for. And, uh, I mean, we could get very specific here in terms of the definitions if we wanted to. But you know, that's really, I guess people would just have to take my word for it or go to the USI site and look it up because I did quite extensive research on the origin of the word, where it comes from, and how that definition evolved. And so that's how it it comes down in terms of ufology as a field of study. But to the average person, they don't think of it that way. It sort of really gets muddy and murky. And I think that it's responsible for a lot of confusion. The average person, when you say UFO, they do think spaceship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it implies spaceship, but it doesn't necessitate spaceship. And I think that's reasonable because, as I was saying, the interstellar hypothesis is a reasonable hypothesis. But it, yeah, but it, the thing you have to bear in mind, Randall, is this. We're looking at UFOs when that term was coined from an early 50s perspective, where you have all possibilities of conventional objects and phenomena, and the only thing left to them was the spaceship explanation. Nothing else was involved, nothing else was considered. Therefore, unknown became the equivalent of a spaceship, because probably in the point of view of those who created that terminology in the project headed by Captain Ruppelt, were that that's what you were talking about. Either it's all these other things or it's spaceships. There's no other conclusion. And if anything, then if you take it that way, that the UFO in the end must be a spaceship if there's no other explanation, that's because the definition is limited. It doesn't well, take into account example. interdimensional craft, yeah. collective unconscious, any of this other stuff. It doesn't take into it. It wasn't even on their radar. Well, they did consider the psychological state of the witnesses when they were in the interview. Right, but you yeah. see, in those cases, they're looking for people who might be a little crazy. <laughs> the psychological state is, well, this person's crazy. They're seeing things. You see? But... Well, yeah, but exactly. But in a sense, this is exactly why there's so much confusion. Well, we'll go into this argument. It's no argument over the meaning of UFOs or whether it even makes a difference. Lucian is one of our listeners who is kind of becoming the questioner of Gene and Randall. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you a few things. The number of elderly residents is expected to nearly double by 2050. 10,000 boomers hit retirement age or turn 65 every day. One in six working adults cares for an aging relative. Now, let me tell you about Care.com. You see, Care.com is the world's largest digital marketplace for finding and managing all kinds of family care. And it's especially good for helping families find high-quality senior care for their loved ones. 
You can browse local caregivers to find the ones that meet your needs. You know, I wish we had a service like Care.com around when my mom became ill very many years ago. And here's a special offer for Paracast listeners. You can save 30% off a Care.com premium membership by going to www.care.com slash Paracast. Are you happy washing your hands with harsh chemicals? Are you happy doing laundry with detergents? Are you happy paying high prices? Find your happiness with Pure Soap. These all-natural, earth-friendly Pure Soaps are the very best you've ever used. Buy in bulk. Get a 12, 36, or 48-month supply. Or get items individually and still save big. You're getting soap products twice as good as what you're using now. Earth-friendly and natural soaps. Your family deserves the best. Happiness is 5starsoap.com. Why not put your money up the drain for a change? See them at 5starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Cal Bend Soap Company can save you thousands of dollars and give you good old-fashioned real soaps that are triple concentrated. Soaps made from vegetable and coconut oils. See their full selection of soaps at 5starsoap.com. That's F-I-V-E starsoap.com or call 1-800-340-7091 for a catalog. Looking for that edge during those intimate moments? We see many ads for enhancement, but the side effects include death. At GCN Team, we should change the Healthy Body Brain and Heart Pack to the Healthy Libido Pack. The brain and heart are not the only organs that require a healthy vascular system. For proper blood flow at the right moment, go to GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. That's 877-878-4203. Heart disease is on the rise. Clogged arteries, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol levels may not be fully detected by you, but the symptoms are there. Loss of energy, blood sugar spikes and drops, poor circulation, and irregular heartbeat are just a few of these that can alert you that something is wrong. Hear how heart and body extract is making a difference in thousands of people's lives across America. My blood pressure has normalized. My diabetes has totally improved. Everyone is telling me now how much healthier I look, and I'm telling everyone how much healthy I feel. I recommend heart and body extract to everyone. Anybody over 40 in the North American continent should be using this product as a preventative to keep their cardiovascular system healthy. Order your two-month supply today by calling 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. Or order online, hbextract.com. Heart and body extract, 866-295-5305. Or hbextract.com. With nearly 70 years of history engineering bunkers, today, Atlas Survival Shelters is still the authority. Atlas offers 18 different choices, from commercial tornado shelters to underground nuclear fallout shelters. Starting at just $99.99, with 100% financing available, comfortable interiors, and state-of-the-art air filtration systems. Atlas Survival Shelters are the most popular private survival shelters in the world. Call 1-855-4-BUNKER now, or visit atlassurvivalshelters.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So as we look this over, Randall Murphy, Lucian, we can debate till the end of time the significance of the term UFO, but I'm just saying to the people involved, like Edward Ruppelt, it was either conventional or spaceship. There was no third option. Conventional being conventional objects or phenomena, which could include people with psychological difficulties, people seeing things, people having delusions, or spaceships. That was it. Now, we could look at UFOs today and say, it's something we haven't figured out yet. We can expand the definition. If you look at it the way you're looking at it, Randall, yeah, it's spaceships because the people who created the term didn't have any other framework of reference. Well, actually, what they were saying is that it's likely that they're interplanetary. They didn't say for certain that they're interplanetary. What it boils down to is that it's still something alien. It was outside of anything that they know how to explain in terms of any current knowledge that we have. So 
the term alien, I think, is a lot more apropos than saying extraterrestrial. And this is how, at least this is how we define it here in uh, USI in terms of ufology as a field of study. Sure, it might be that there's phenomena that's caused by some natural, maybe some sort of creature that we don't know of, let's suppose, that's flying around. But that gets into something like cryptozoology. It's not ufology. It's something else. So what we're looking for specifically is some sort of an alien craft. And that's how it's defined, at least to the best of my research, in a historical sense, which is far more objective than simply what I want to believe. So this is what we're left with. To your point of view, Randall, yes. But I'm not looking for a spaceship. I'm looking for the answer. Well, if yeah. the answer is a spaceship, cool, that's fine. If the answer is something else, I'm looking for that too. So if, when you look exactly. for a spaceship, by God, you might find one. Maybe. That's just like if you look for a black hole, you might find one. But at the beginning, people have to have some idea about what it is they're looking for and what they mean by that in order to advance their study of whatever it is that they're trying to figure out. So that's the that's the case that I make, is if we just make it so broad and, and um, nebulous that we don't know what we're talking about anymore, the field itself loses focus. And so we really do need something that narrows down what it is we're talking about in a concrete way. So I do that from a historical perspective in as objective way as I can in order to make it clear what it is we're looking for. And again, you know, I'm not saying spaceship. I'm saying that's a reasonable hypothesis, but it may not be the actual answer. I think we but, don't need to debate the terminology. I don't think it takes us anywhere. It doesn't solve anything. Does UFOs accommodate all this other stuff? What were they thinking in 1953 when they were looking at UFOs about the possible answers? Now, with Captain Ruppelt, it was kind of strange because you got the impression from the first part of the book, the original book, that he believed they were spaceships because it got to that impression. And then when he did the three chapters before his death, he said, no, I'm positive they don't. He used that phrase. I'm positive they don't in terms of UFOs being real. He felt then he decided, well, it was just conventional stuff. And it sounded to some people that he didn't even write those last three chapters. But to me, I think it was within the same writing style. In fact, what reminded me of that is that the original report on unidentified flying objects was written very much the way Kehoe would write a book. Go ahead. Yeah, Come they on. knew each other at the time. I remember a section of one of Kehoe's books where he went into great detail about Ruppelt's concerns over the pressure he was confronting about that book, that the book was too positive about UFOs. And he felt, I guess, that he was forced into writing those last three chapters. Yeah, and it may, that may have been the case that there was some pressure on him to sort of abide by the Condon Report recommendations and the Robertson panel recommendations. Right, but the Condon Report wasn't out when Ruppelt was alive. Yeah, Ruppelt well, died in the down, 1950s at the in his late 30s of a heart condition. He died very shortly after he wrote those three chapters. Right, I won't say that he died to... because of the pressure of writing those chapters, probably because he had a heart condition. And something today we deal with without as much trouble, but not in the 1950s. Right, so we yeah, have to go back so to he Robertson was, but he now. was basically responding to what was happening at the time. And remember, Ruppelt also wanted to make a mark in private industry, make a living, that kind of thing. And maybe this helped, he thought, to improve his standing. Okay, he's not the UFO guy. He didn't believe it. He Maybe he'll get a job somewhere. That's my suspicion. You know, uh, I was thinking, if I may say something, um, Stan Friedman is not a young pup anymore. You may want to get him on and get some people really prepared to grill him and let him defend himself in a pretty contentious forum. You're volunteering. I am. 
Um, and if you were, we were set up like that, I would read his books. I'm a, I'm a fan, so I would hopefully I would be polite about it. Uh, but as, as you're aware, there's a lot of skepticism about Roswell, and maybe we should really you know, put Stan to the test and let the listeners decide. Um, but Stan is a wealth of information, much of it unpublished. Uh, for example, there's Blue Book, I believe it's 1 through 12 that was released to the public. 14, I believe, was released to the public. There's a missing Blue Book 13, volume 13, that no one has been able to find. Uh, the official explanation seems to be wink, wink, nod, nod. Nobody likes the number 13. But Stan has told me that he has heard from more than one source that it exists and it has not been released to the public. Little little tidbits like that, I think, would really enrich the field to have that stuff on the record. Um, but getting back to uh, Grilling Stan, who, again, is not getting any younger, that would, might be a pretty good thing. I, I don't understand, and I wish Chris were here, why Ray Stanford has not put out a book. And maybe uh, you guys will be able to address that in another another installment of your show when Chris is back on or Ray's back on. I would like to know why he's so reserved in putting out information. Those are some uh, suggested topics for you in the future. Well, we've covered that in terms, we've asked Ray about that. Good. Go ahead. What was his answer then? Well, he's not ready yet. You know, when he's ready, he'll publicize it. The problem is here is that here's somebody who has had heart problems. He's in his late 70s. I'd have to look up his age. And there yeah. is a point here where you better do it or yeah. I fear you may not be around to do it. We don't know. He may live another 20 years and do fine. But we don't know. What we do know is that we've got another half of the show to do. We're only partway there. Louis Sheehan is one of our listeners serving as a questioner, a panelist, with Gina Randall. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Fully cooked, ready to eat bacon. I'm talking thick, meaty, center cut, presidential bacon. Savory and delicious. I buy some, I use some, I store some. Awesome. No refrigeration needed with a 10 year shelf life. NASA pack technology. Bacon. Fully cooked, fully hydrated, ready to eat right from the pack bacon or warm and served. Life saving, ready to eat bacon. 10 year shelf life bacon. Ships free at fullycookedbacon.com. Fullycookedbacon.com. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpillett.com. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. Investing is a long-term process. How many times can you think of in the last decade that the stock market has destroyed retirement funds for people just like you and me? For your existing IRA, you need the security that gold has provided for centuries. Remember, gold has never been worth zero. Capital Gold would like to introduce you to the Home Storage Gold IRA. 
It's a self-directed IRA set up with all the protection and tax benefits of an LLC. But the big difference in this IRA is you invest in gold and you hold it in your possession. You can't do that with stocks. That's security. You can transfer any type of IRA hassle-free in days. Please call right now and learn more, and we'll waive the $500 setup fee and give you a free safe to store your gold. 800-535-7789. 800-535-7789. 800-535-7789. That's 800-535-7789. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-7740. That's 800-610-7740. 800-610-7740. Hi, this is James Fox from Chasing UFOs. You're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Now, I should remind you again, we have a second radio show after the Paracast, and it's unpredictable. We never know from week to week what we're going to do. We're going to finish an interview or do other stuff. If you want to listen to that show and download the show every week, like clockwork, you have to join the Powercast Plus, a special subscription service for a low price. Our price cheap, dollar forty nine a week, four ninety nine a month. But we like to push the five year and lifetime because you get free books. Go to plus.thepowercast.com. More video content is coming, and you get the commercial free version of the show. Lewis Sheehan is someone who has been a regular listener to the show and participant in our forums. And we had a roundtable offer, and he volunteered. He stuck his neck out, and he's in the thick of it right now, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm prepared, you might add. If I had been allowed some time, if I'd done advance, I would have been much better prepared. Uh, but here's another thought for you. When you can, when you get Paul Kimball back on, and I know at least in the, in the past he's been a frequent guest or participant, ask him about his movie, the top ten uh, sightings. I believe he said he's in his own mind, and I believe he's even published somewhere some retractions as to some of his uh, the claims in his movie. And I'd like to have a more detailed explanation as to what he's retracted and why. So there's another set of questions for you, Gene. Well, let's just see. Paul will be back soon. In fact, he was on After the Powercast some weeks back. So he'll be back soon. We were actually going to have him on last week or the week before the episode we did with Greg Bishop and Randall and Chris and I, and it ended up that he couldn't make it. He had to do something for his real life as opposed to this life. But I'm hoping that we'll hear from him soon. So he stays in touch. You know, he participates in the forums every so often. He's doing another season of that ghost show that he did some years back, a new version of it. So I'm sure he's going to want to Get the word out about Haunted. He had a forum thread about it. And he will definitely, definitely a thousand percent be back. Well, I'm just, again, prompting or urging you to ask him about his movie and what what views of his have changed over time. Um, because I've watched his movie several times, enjoy it greatly. Um, and, and it's free, by the way. It's on YouTube for free. I don't know if your listeners know that, but uh, that's out there for you. Um, I want to hear more about your life and what you've been doing these past couple of decades other than running the Paracast. Have you been making any uh, individual investigations or are you more the reporter type? I've always been the reporter type because my background is broadcast journalism. So I have a multiple history 
in UFO research. I went straight through from the 50s to the mid to late 70s. And then I took a hiatus for about a decade because I just ran into a situation where I just couldn't do it anymore. And I had to earn a living. I was newly married and had to do different things that took a lot of my time. And then my wife got involved trying for a singing career and came very close. And then our son was born. So it got really complicated in the late 80s. I started drifting back into it off and on, put out a magazine for a few years, watched the wheels go by. And then in 2006 came the PowerCast. That covers a lot of it. And which guests have you found the most intriguing? Well, you see, that's an interesting thing. I just finished putting up nearly 400 episodes of the PowerCast on YouTube. And for much of that, oh, I, didn't have, no. I didn't have a very good internet connection at the time. So it took a while. But we're done with it now. We might start putting up the older episodes from 2006 through 2010. That will come later. But when you're talking about that many episodes, we have a lot of very interesting guests. I um, always treasure the sessions we did with Jim Mosley. Jim was on our first episode with Brad Steiger. And he came on every so often. And he was fascinating. And then, in terms of guests, Dr. Jacques Vallée was certainly one of our better guests. We actually had him on the show one more time than you hear. And this is kind of weird. We've mentioned it before. We did a recording one hour. First hour, going well. Something happened to the recording. And Jacques didn't have time to go on and redo it. So that show died without ever being aired. Most of what he said, though, was later discussed. We had him back on the PowerCast for an hour, very recently for a full session. And he'll rejoin us later this year. He was among my favorites. Now, for various reasons, we'd had other guests over the years. I'm looking at the list right now, the full list. And the reason is some of those guests were not, shall we say, of the most honest or accurate. Sean David Morton. Well, Sean David Morton was actually on the PowerCast I think in our first year, I'm going to look right now. Yeah, very early, very early. I went back and listened to the show for fun. Well. He was early. He was, a, yes, he was on May 23rd, 2006. We had him on for the full episode, which was 90 minutes then. And then after he was on, we took apart what he said. Because the problem with what he said is most of it was nonsense. He claimed to know this, that, and the other thing. He claimed to be friends with various people. Ended up... Uh-uh. So that was interesting. Another interesting show we did was with Michael Horn. And I thought we did two shows with him. And we did, yes. We did June 27th, 2006... And two weeks later, we had debate between him and our original co-host, David Biedney, in which David had done a photo analysis of some of the Billy Meyer photos and tore them apart. Now, whatever you say to Michael Horn, a politician would love him. He is totally loyal to his subject. <laughs> He's like the Sean Spicer of the contactee movement who would tell any lie to advance the interests of his client, if you call Billy Meyer a client. Okay? So uh -huh. that's, the, that's the resemblance I can see. I thought that was an interesting episode, precipitated forum discussions that went on and on. In another way, the appearance of abduction investigator Dr. David Jacobs was interesting and telling especially the most recent time, because he is a very polarizing figure. To put it mildly, a very, very polarizing figure. Some people like what he did, what he's done. 
other people think that he is completely incompetent when it comes to doing hypnosis. He doesn't observe the proper cautions, and thus his evidence is very tainted. And when he got into this interaction with a former subject who started, I don't know, some people say that she stalked him, but certainly followed him around and sent to anyone who would listen lengthy critics, criticisms of his work. We're not going to mention her name because her name was fake anyway. As a result of that, whenever we'd bring up the subject in our forums, it got wacky. You may have seen this, Lou. Anytime we mentioned David Jacobs and that other person. The forums just kind of got bent out of shape. So we haven't had him on because I don't think he liked us after that show, David Jacobs. I thought he felt that we were pushing him too hard. And are you going to express your opinions of Dr. Jacobs or not? Let's talk about his work, not about his uh, the unfortunate situation with his one test subject. Well, let's do a break first, okay? We'll continue with our discussions and our responses to Louis Sheehan's questions with Gene and Randall. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest price filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Frustrated trying to get business capital? Want to take the slow process and rejection out of the equation? GCNloans.com removes the slow, irritating approval process. Instead, get quick, simple funding. Powered by David Allen Capital, 80% of our pre-qualified clients are approved in days. Pre-qualify at GCNloans.com and get your money this week. It's that easy. GCNloans.com. That's GCNloans.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip-flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap even though I slept eight hours. When I invented MyPillow, I wanted it to where you could move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. MyPillow will get you into that deep REM sleep faster, and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed. It's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do 
all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-870-0305 and use promo code GCN. That's MyPillow.com or 800-870-0305 with promo code GCN. North Korea openly threatens the U.S. and launches a new missile every other week. Their warhead of choice? Electromagnetic pulse. Such an event would cripple the U.S. power grid for years and leave millions in the dark. Are you ready? You can be with a Solark EMP-hardened solar generator. Solark works day in and day out to keep your essentials protected. You can have peace of mind knowing your power will be there when you most need it. Visit PortableSolarLLC.com to see EMP testing. That's PortableSolarLLC.com. Energy insurance for your family. Hey, this is Marie D. Jones, the author of This Book is from the Future, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We continue. Chris O'Brien on special assignment, kind of getting a few personal things together. Randall Murphy is our guest co-host again. Louis Sheehan is one of our listeners who's here to ask us questions that we do not expect. There is no preparation for it. He understands now the way the show is done, which is we may know directions in which we're taking, but we don't know what a listener is going to ask, what a guest is going to ask us. We just go on and on. So you were starting in something. You were asking more about reactions to David Jacobs. Correct. And again, we're just focusing on his hypnosis and his theories that he's developed or his his explanations that he's developed and not relating to the unfortunate situation with his one female test subject. Well, let's put it this way. Kevin Randall co-authored a book looking into the usefulness of hypnotic regression to get accurate information from somebody. And he's not impressed. We had him on the show discussing it. I worry about any case that involves primarily someone's memories recovered through hypnosis. I worry when someone asks leading questions and then says, as David Jacobs said, it doesn't matter. There's no such thing. Of course there is. If you're taking a person under hypnosis and you are somehow manipulating them to give you a certain answer, you may get the answer you want. You may get the answer you expect, but it may not be what really happened. So I think he does his subjects a disservice because I think there are lots of sincere people out there who genuinely have an experience they cannot explain. That's the abduction experience. They have no idea what's gone on with their lives. Some people are really, really traumatized as a result. And I'd like to know what happened to them. Now, some people feel that this phenomenon is separate from the normal UFO sighting experience. I think Jerome Clark feels that way. We know that people like our friend Red Pill Junkie, Miguel, he feels that near-death experiences and UFO abductions have a startling similarity. And he wrote an article for the Powercast newsletter saying why. When you look at that, you can say, well, people who are having abductions may be interacting with something, but maybe the reason that it appears to be UFO-related is strictly because that's the culture in which they live. That if they live at a different time, they'd interact with something else. Could be leprechauns or something else. Right. You see what I mean? I do. If you're asking me that question, uh, a brief anecdote from my end. I moved to California a few years ago, and I looked up some UFO groups. I've never joined one, and only one person responded. And this lady told me that she was, she had alien DNA, but I could tell from her behavior that uh, there were a lot of issues she had. I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist, and I, you know, but it was clear she had some significant issues, and I know she was on a lot of medication. And I I came to the same conclusion, that if uh, she had lived 300 years ago, she would say she had leprechaun DNA or something like that. Which brings me to the next question. Have you read Valet's book? Uh, I don't even know the title because I've not read it, but about Patagonia 
And what is what could you summarize that book for your listeners? Because I know so many people speak with of it with reference reverence, uh, but I've not had the time to read it. Passport to Magonia. That book a little bit. That's where he goes into a lot of mythology that parallels uh, the UFO phenomena. And beyond that, you just have to read the book and go through the number of stories and accounts that he deals with in the book itself. Um, my comment on it typically is that, well, it's natural for us to try to explain what we don't understand given the knowledge that we have at the time. Uh, so we have to be careful about assuming that simply because somebody perhaps in the past if might interpret it one way, that modern interpretations are no more accurate than theirs. In other words, people used to think that thunder was the hammer of the gods, and now we know that that's different because we've looked at it with a critical mind and we have scientific uh, thinking, we're much better educated, and therefore I think there's a hierarchy of theories that in modern day tend to be uh, tend to carry more weight than, say, something from the 1800s or classical antiquity. So, so we have to be careful about saying, oh, well, you know, UFOs could be anything. It doesn't matter. It's all mythology. I don't buy into it. I don't. And uh, in our recent interview with Valet, you know, we, we did cover that to some degree. And he admits, well, you know, mythological concepts don't have radar returns. So, you know, we're looking at something that is materially real, not mythological. But is this like the gestalt now that I hear in this era that UFOs are not necessarily nuts and bolts coming from other planets, that they could be interdimensional or some other explanation, something along the lines of what Gene was saying? Is this like going along or substantiating the logic that uh, Gene was kind of expressing that UFOs shouldn't be understood to be such a narrow interpretation, I guess, until they're proven until we have some right in front of us and we can drive some around. Is that what, is that what you're getting at, Gene? I think we should look as much on the form as the substance because the form may not be what it really is. We don't know that's really that. We see it that way because of our culture. But if this is a race of people or beings who've come here from other star systems, say, and they're hundreds or thousands of years ahead of us, if they're a thousand years ahead of us, or five thousand, or ten thousand, would we even recognize their means of travel? Their means of travel is viewed in the image of Star Trek, say. You know, we have Star Trek, we have physical spaceships doing physical things. But that's depicting humanity in the 23rd century. And we assume 250, 300 years from now, that's what things are going to be. Because that's what our sci fi writers have dreamed up. What's going to happen a 1,000 years from now, 5,000 years from now? Can they go from one place to the other like the Q continuum beings do? Would we even see them the way they really look? Could we even perceive their technology as technology? Because we perceive Star Trek in relation to our technology or it influences our technology in certain ways, like the Star Attack clamshell Mobile handset from the 90s, from Motorola. Possible tablets like an iPad, although 2001 A Space Odyssey depicted tablets as well. Inventions that are based on Star Trek technology. I mean, scientists are looking into matter transportation, teleportation devices. They're looking into warp drive. And this is all based on our cultural image that brings us Star Trek. And even Star Wars if you get past the mystical stuff and the force, it's still physical spaceships doing physical things. That's why we look at it as uh, here as alien instead of necessarily extraterrestrial and craft in terms of some sort of a transport mechanism, something that gets them from there into our perceptual uh, frame of reference. So, you know, we don't know that it's riveted metal pieces of craft necessarily. We do have some pretty strong circumstantial evidence to suggest that some of the reports are of those kinds of craft. But we have to be careful, I agree, in making assumptions about the full range of them because they may not be that type of thing. 
But simply calling them alien craft, I think, is gives us a wide enough field of possibility and find enough focus that we can make the subject uh, less nebulous and give us something to look into that doesn't include just every wild theory that could be out there that makes no sense. Yes, but you still are looking at it in terms of our Star Trek framework. So maybe it isn't quite what we see. Maybe we see it that way because of what they're doing or what we perceive. It could be something else, but we still say, okay, E.T. is very highly advanced and they manifest themselves in a way we understand, like they did in Contact, where E.T. manifested itself, his self, herself, to the Jodie Foster character as her late dad because we couldn't accept his true appearance. Or maybe that was a dream experience. It all happened in her head. Because remember, although she imagined or thought she traveled to another planet um, revolving around another star system and that device, she really didn't go anywhere physically. So where did she go? How did she go? And is that another image of how E.T. gets here? If there's an E.T., is that what they do? Or is it even an E.T.? Again, we might be dealing with some kind of consciousness that we can't even understand. A hundred years from now, we may have UFOs and have a totally different idea. We have J. Randall Murphy, Gene Steinberg, Louis Sheehan. You're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We also have swag. You know, we have all these exclusive Paracast things that you can buy. We've got like, I guess, 60 or so different items and entails T-shirts, sleeves for notebook computers, iPad cases, mouse pads, the Paracast jumbo tote bag, all sorts of T-shirts and jackets and stuff like that for men and women. We have a Paracast aluminum water bottle. All this stuff, you go to store.theparacast.com, store.theparacast.com. What makes it special is that the items are the best quality, you know, great T-shirts, fabrics, and they have our official logo on them. That's what makes them special in multiple sizes and colors. We even have stuff for children, stuff for women, stuff for men. We have all sorts of sizes, like small up to X large. A lot of good stuff. That's the swag from the Paracast. You go to store.theparacast.com, stop by, and take a shopping tour. Anytime, any place, anywhere, radio remains the most intimate of all forms of media. At home, at work, in the car, on smartphones. Over 90% of consumers still listen to radio every week. That makes choosing radio as a place to advertise your business one of the best decisions you can make. Email advertise at GCNlive.com and partner up with an experienced GCN representative. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. In an emergency, you need a fire now. But what if the wood is wet? No problem for InstaFire. Our non-toxic fire starter packs, light wet wood, can even burn on water or in any weather. Sustains winds up to 30 miles per hour, and each pouch weighs only 1.75 ounces. Need an emergency stove? Get the InstaFire Inferno stove that boils water in under three minutes. Temps up to 1,500 degrees. Free shipping on anything. Go to InstaFire.com slash radio specials and get yours today. InstaFire. Fire in an instant. InstaFire.com slash radio specials. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. We have Jay Randall Murphy as guest co-host and Louis Sheehan, one of our listeners, who volunteered to join us. A number of others wanted to come on, but work schedules intervene. I've just heard from a few, so maybe next time. Maybe the idea that Lou had about having someone like Stanton Friedman submit to listener questions who are present as panelists make it unpredictable. And I think UFOs, in many respects, may be unpredictable because, again, Randall, you're still looking at it in terms of our technology. Uh, there is a question I wanted to ask Lou, though, and that, this takes us back to the beginning of the show 
uh, where you were talking about you got into it because of your interest in, in ancient aliens. And I'm kind of wondering what your view on that is today and if sort of how that's evolved, especially in light of, I'm not sure if you've seen the the expose, it's called Ancient Aliens Debunked, where it goes through quite a number of cases to, where they make the claim that there were ancient aliens and just pretty much does actually debunk them. So, you know, kind of where do you sit on that today? I, you know, there's a show and you'd have to tell me the, the title of it because I watched one episode and I thought it was so terrible. I haven't watched it since. I think it's been on for God knows nine years. George Sukos. Uh, I just thought it was so poor, so unconvincing. I couldn't bring myself to watch it or use my time like that. So I don't know if that's a beginning of an introduction as to where I think about the ancient aliens. In my mind, I don't doubt that there were visitations, but most of the evidence offered up to uh, suggest that there were visits, I think is just hokum. So I, I don't spend much time reviewing that information. But when I was young, when Chariots of the Gods came out, whatever I was, six years, nine years old, something like that. And at that point, it was just very stimulating. And of course, we brought out passages from the Old Testament in particular that sounded as if they involved UFOs. It was an interesting way of re-looking at things, which I appreciated. But has much of that evidence held up? I think the answer is no. I hope that answers your question. I do have another question for Gene. I'm going to put his feet to the fire. He's been critical of MUFON's questionnaire about not getting into the psychological aspects or the background aspects of the witnesses. But does he have specific suggestions? What does he get? He being Gene, I'm speaking of him in the third person as I speak. Gene, do you have specific questions? Where are you going with these suggestions? I'm intrigued by why you are so strongly committed to revising the approach to analyzing UFOs in this manner. If you could answer that, please. Okay, well, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different answer. And MUFON has been at it now for what, 48 years? 1969. Started out as the Mutual UFO Network, a splinter group that moved off from APRO, and still going on. And they really haven't changed much, and they haven't given us that much in the way of positive results. The only thing that's changed is they seem to have decided to become more commercial and kind of set aside their goal of doing scientific research to entertaining people with the Hangar One TV show, which had at times a passing resemblance to the truth, to the last MUFON convention where they're talking about secret space program and bringing on crazy time travelers. We've talked about that in previous episodes of the PowerCast. I think if they want to investigate UFOs, the argument I make is that they're looking at only part of the mystery. The part of the mystery is the event. But we don't know if we can divorce that event from the witness who sees that thing. And what I think they need to do, at the very least, is not, well, if they volunteer the information, that's fine. That's what Jan Harzan, the executive director, says. What I said is that why not simply have them as questions? Ask about the background of the witness. Have they seen other unusual phenomena? What about it? Tell us about it. The family history? Tell us. Previous UFO sightings? Tell us. Ghosts, whatever. Bigfoot? Tell us. Learn something. Do a profile of the witness and see if that leads us to any ideas about who might be seeing UFOs. Can we find that certain people have a propensity to see things more than other people. It's something that we see. Some people see UFOs all the time. Might be the luck of the draw. Some people never see them. Some people may have something weird happen to them, but nothing defined enough like me. So I think that's where MUFON is selling itself short. Instead of becoming a commercial organization for the purpose of filling seats in auditoriums and increasing the cash flow... They need to do a more thorough effort of investigation, but that requires a different attitude. As long as they think the UFOs are separate from the witness, like looking at an aircraft, you're not a participant in the event. If you don't allow for the possibility that they're participants, I think they're not doing the subject justice. Oh, by the way, listeners, I have asked once again Jan Harzan to come on the show. So far, no answer. Go ahead. 
You know, Dean, well, fabulous, fabulous. I can't say enough good stuff about that attitude that is so that focuses right in on the people who are involved in making the reports and they are in and of, of themselves the evidence. You, you cannot, like you say, divorce the observer from what's being observed. I really do think that you're onto something there. What I'm envisioning in the good old days was um, you're on the lookout for Japanese aircraft attacking your ship. So you keep a keen eye out, and if you see one, you report it, and that's the end of the story. They, you know, The other people take it from there. It doesn't matter how many I've seen in the past. What are you implying by the fact that someone may have seen 20 and another person may have seen one? What are you getting at there? I mean, I have my own suspicions, but do you share my suspicions that people who are multiple experiencers are less credible than the singular? I don't think it's a matter of credibility. I think it's something in their past, something in their genetic makeup, or just the luck of the draw that might make them more prone to see something. I don't think they just made it up. I think some people just made it up or had a real experience. And this might imply what happens to some so-called experiencers or contactees where they have the experience and they get some kind of recognition, notability about it. And after a while, people want to know, well, what's the next story? And they have to come up with a second story and a third story and they go on. But that doesn't mean that this implies that if you see a UFO more than once or twice, You're making it up because there are people there who aren't looking for fame or fortune. It just happens to them and they report it. And I think they're reporting it accurately and we need to find out what's happening and also why they are prone to seeing it. Again, understanding their family background, prior experiences, where they live, a whole bunch of things. Yeah, fabulous. So, Lou, why would you think that it it would make a person less credible necessarily? Well, I have not seen one let alone 10. So I just think the odds are don't favor somebody seeing 10. I had an experience. I went to, again, I moved to California a few years ago. So I lived near where they hold contact in the desert. And a nice lady and I met up there uh, amongst other people, a crowd of people. And this nice lady had told me she had seen multiple UFOs. While we were there, she pointed out something in the sky, which she said was a UFO. It to me looked like a star. You know, I'm polite. I didn't say anything, but it's clearly a star. And it makes me wonder about a lot of reported UFOs. I don't know. The way I was raised, you wouldn't lie about something like that. But as I've lived life longer and longer, I realize there are a lot of people out there who will say anything. I don't know. I'm not going anywhere with this particular observation, but I can understand the premise that we're looking for honest people to report honest observations uh, and to make note of them. I do agree that I'm not aware that I personally am not aware that MUFON has done much to raise the bona fides of the, the subject matter. They have not, to my knowledge, <laughs> produced any craft, any videos that have persuaded world governments to change their positions. So I'm a little disappointed in what MUFON has produced. I don't understand the structure of it, where apparently a lot of the reports head up, go uphill, and nothing comes back downhill. I just don't know if it's because MUFON doesn't have the resources or, or what's going on. Well, you make That's, a good point there. Good. Like, let's, this takes us back to, like, well, Gene, when you were saying that having a clear understanding of what the word means. Randall, Gene, Lewis, you're in. The Paracast. <laughs> Neighbors, I want to tell you about my favorite graphics app. It's the award-winning Graphic Converter. You know, Graphic Converter is the universal genius for photo editing on your Mac. Join over one and a half million loyal users for this Swiss Army Knife photo editing app. It gives you all you expect from a top-flight image editing app with tons of features. And most important, it's easy to use. It's also far less expensive than that other app that you can only get by subscription. You know, the one I'm talking about. What's more, you can get 20% off with your order right now. So write this down to learn about Graphic Converter. Go to www.lemkesoft.de slash gene. Let me spell that www.lemkesoft.de slash gene.
Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow. And like all of you out there, I had problems sleeping. Pillows would go flat. I would flip-flop all night long. I would wake up with a sore neck, maybe a headache, or feel like I needed a nap even though I slept eight hours. When I invented MyPillow, I wanted it to where you could move the patented fill to give you the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of sleep position. MyPillow will get you into that deep REM sleep faster, and you will stay there longer. It's not about how much time we spend in bed. It's about how much of that quality sleep we get. I do all of my own manufacturing right here in the United States. I have a 10-year warranty. You can wash and dry my pillow, and I give you a 60-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. And here's my best offer ever. You can buy one of my pillows and get one absolutely free. Go to MyPillow.com or call 800-870-0305 and use promo code GCN. That's MyPillow.com or 800-870-0305 with promo code GCN. Actual testimonials from real Numana customers. I've tried all kinds of food storage, and Numana is by far the best. I'm a single mom with two teenage boys and a full-time job. I don't always have time to cook a four-course meal. That's where Numana has been such a blessing. I can spend less time in the kitchen and more time on what matters most, like helping with homework. Find out for yourself. Order online at thepowermall.com. That's thepowermall.com. Numana is... The stores I love to eat. Yum! Thepowermall.com. Have you checked your Google search results lately? Search results are usually the first impression that people form of you or your business. So make sure that they create a positive impression with ReputationDefender.com. What the Internet says about you can have a big impact on your life and your livelihood, even if it's not true. Fortunately, you can now control how you look online and in online search results with ReputationDefender.com. Call 800-831-0771 now. That's 800-831-0771 for your free reputation. Analysis. If you have negative material from an ex-employee, upset patient, or former client, newspaper article, legal issue, social media, or other source showing up in your search results, you can combat it with ReputationDefender.com. Our dedicated experts in patented technology can help make your online search results look their best. Call 800-831-0771 to learn more. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Or visit ReputationDefender.com. With nearly 70 years of history engineering bunkers, today, Atlas Survival Shelters is still the authority. Atlas offers 18 different choices, from commercial tornado shelters to underground nuclear fallout shelters. Starting at just $99.99, with 100% financing available, comfortable interiors, and state-of-the-art air filtration systems, Atlas Survival Shelters are the most popular private survival shelters in the world. Call 1-855-4-BUNKER now, or visit atlassurvivalshelters.com. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. So Randall had a response to that comment made by Lewis Sheehan on this week's episode of the Paracast. Go ahead, please. I can kind of tie your comment in from earlier where you were saying it doesn't help us to have a clear understanding of what we mean by UFO. And then Lou's comment that this uh, witness that he was speaking to, from what he could tell, what she was looking at was a star. And so when you go into back into the AFR 202, the Air Force definition, the first thing it says that you don't count as a UFO or familiar and known objects, and that includes aircraft, birds, balloons, kites, searchlights, and astronomical bodies, including meteors, planets, and stars. So if it looks like a star, you don't report it as a UFO. But people out there with this idea in their head that, well, I don't know what it is, it looks like a star, but I can't be sure, that's not a UFO. But you get a whole bunch of noise into the reporting system because people don't have a clear idea of what they're talking about in the first place. So I think it really would help us to get that straightened out in no uncertain terms. I'm just going to leave it be for the time being. I think we've been there and done that. Okay. I want to look sure. at what we can sure. do in the future. I want to pretend right now that MUFON, until they respond to some very serious questions we've been asking for months, is not relevant to current UFO research because they haven't advanced anything. They haven't done anything past the 1960s that's told us anything. 
I don't know if they've done anything beyond what APRO did. They were a spinoff from APRO. What have they done to advance research past APRO or better? I won't count what NICAP did in the 50s and 60s because Major Keogh ran NICAP as a lobbying organization strictly to get congressional hearings on the subject. When that happened, when we had the Condon report, which buried Project Blue Book, gave the Air Force the excuse to close it down, once that happened... NICAP had no reason to exist because it was not an investigative organization. It was a lobbying organization. And I think that's where we stand. I mean, what UFO organizations are out there, and we obviously Randall has his, but those that are financed enough to actually have field investigators, what are they doing? When someone sees a UFO, where do we go? Well, like you're saying, Gene, getting into... The actual witnesses themselves, I think that's that's really important. And and to throw in sort of the third perspective, you know, I uh, unabashedly admit that I am a believer in alien visitation. Wherever they're from and how they're getting here exactly, I'm not sure. But it seems to be happening to too many people to simply say it's not happening. And therefore, you kind of have to ask yourself why. And that's where the connection for me between the witness and the stimulus is in terms of you know what it is causing it. It implies that whatever they are, they're studying us for some reason or another. And if that's the case, then what you suggest by studying the people means that if we're the subject, then we can extrapolate from that some sort of intention about what they're doing here and why. Beyond that, it's difficult to say. I mean, the the pattern suggests some sort of study at a distance where they don't get themselves too involved in the actual experiment to contaminate it that much unless it's very specific. It's sort of always on their terms. And it could explain a whole variety of behaviors and experiences, including maybe, as you suggested, Gene, a number of uh, experiences by a single person or family members and some people have suggested that it can go back a number of generations. So this kind of all fits with the idea that there's, there's some sort of a study going on about us by them for some sort of a reason. What that reason is, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, that gets into a lot of speculation. But your idea to look at the people behind them, the, the reports, I think that speaks directly to the possibility and the motivation for why they're here. That's why what I've called Chris, for example, one of the most important people in ufology today. When you look at the sum total of his number of experiences and you try to think of some reason for why all of those things would happen to him, it creates a picture that is really quite extraordinary. Oh, I want to ask you, Gene, I know it's not the type of uh, thought process you enjoy going through, but What's your speculation as to why we're being visited? Do you have any? Well, the question here assumes that we're being deliberately visited as opposed to Mm -hmm. being in touch with something that is always there. Well, let's just assume we're being visited. Okay, well, that's based on an assumption that someone or something out there finds us interesting enough to visit us. And as a result, they or it or whatever they are has to satisfy some curiosity. Or it's part of a monitoring process of our civilization. Or it's something that we undergo as part of our development. In interacting with our universe, we undergo these experiences as we advance ourselves. Oh, that's interesting. Can you elaborate on that a little more? I think, what if, as we grow as a species... There are certain things that happen to us that are part of our development. You mean we just naturally become more aware of the universe like we became more aware that there's galaxies out there and that this just becomes available to our senses as we evolve? Something, Have I got that kind of thinking? Is that- I suppose that's possible. Or the phenomenon is a way to advance humans. That as we advance as a species, things happen to us that we need as part of our developmental process. 
our collective unconscious or something. So we're being given the incentive to ultimately develop spaceships and leave this planet, explore the universe. That's our imperative. Now, is that Mother Nature sending us a signal that Earth is not going to last forever and we've got to go to the stars? Mm, Mother Nature is a sort of, yeah, well, I suppose you could look at it in the largest sense that everything is natural to some extent if it's a product of the universe. But when you get looking at, okay, there's a Air Force base and it picks up a UFO on its radar and sends a couple of jets up and they pick up that UFO on their radar and then they make a visual on it as well. And it looks like it's some sort of disc and they close in on it enough to make it out in daylight. I mean, we're that's getting pretty specific about the type of thing that we're talking about. It's no longer just a nebulous, well, it could be this or that Mother Nature thing. We're talking about something very physical and right before the senses of people who are observing it while it's being instrumentally detected. All right, that's a good possibility, too. Let me get back to some of your previous guests. Why don't you go through some more lists of uh, who you thought were stars and who you thought were duds? Well, we had Paula Harris on once. And we kind of ended the conversation like a few minutes before the show concluded with, well, we're not going to go anywhere with this. And where it got off the rails, in addition to everything else, let's do the break. We'll talk about that in our next segment. With Gene Randall and Lewis, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I'm here to tell you about GCNTelecare.com, a team of board-certified doctors assisting you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Within 15 minutes of registration, care your family can afford. Revolutionizing the healthcare industry, virtual consulting, providing diagnosis of non-emergency medical issues by phone or secure video on computer or smart mobile devices. GCNTelecare.com. Virtual care anywhere. The answer to being in control of your own health care is freedom from insurance. Become part of a group of self-pay patients that come together to share in each other's medical expenses. Individual share amounts begin at $107 a month and $347 for families. Choose from three health sharing programs. Holistic treatments may be eligible for sharing. See guidelines. Discount programs available for dental, vision, and pharmacy. Go to libertyoncall.org. That's libertyoncall.org. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you. People seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com. And if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more. And this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com. ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. It's been said, any society is only three missed meals away from chaos. Those times may be near. Think about it. Our country faces multiple terrorist threats and aggressions from Russia and North Korea. Social unrest and violent marches yet again may lead to looting of stores and city shutdowns. And our crumbling infrastructure leaves our power grid vulnerable to long-term outages from a single cyber attack. When the chaos from any one of these threats arises, the government knows it can't provide during a widespread national emergency. That's why you need your own plan for self-reliance. That's where My Patriot Supply comes in. 
Get a four-week survival food supply for only $99. That includes breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Order online at preparewithgcn.com. $99 for four weeks of survival food that tastes like homemade cooking and lasts up to 25 years from My Patriot Supply. Get your kits today at preparewithgcn.com. Free shipping is included. Preparewithgcn.com. Kiyosaki, Rogers, and Schiff all concur there's an economic calamity that will be facing this country. My question to you is, do you know when and are you prepared? Most people don't, but my friends over at Republic Monetary Exchange have been leading experts in precious metals to help you offset the coming economic collapse. Right now, for a limited time, they have a free book called The 10 Reasons You Should Own Gold. You simply need to give them a call at 888-772-2929 to get that in your hands. Do not allow the insiders to do what they did to you in 2008, putting your IRAs, 401ks, and savings in jeopardy. You need this book, and you need it now. The 10 Reasons You Should Own Gold. Call 888-772-2929. That's 888-772-2929. There's a reason that the largest investment banking company in the world, J.P. Morgan, just purchased another 50 million ounces of silver. This free book will explain it. 888-772-2929. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So, one of the guests that kind of took us off the rails in terms of her participation was Paula Harris, who claims to be some kind of reporter. And we had her on the Paracast once, a long time ago with the original co-host. And towards the end, we questioned her where she said that she thought that Billy Meyer was the real deal. And we wanted to maybe have her justify that. And she denied saying it. And evidently, of course, she did say it. And maybe she was embarrassed saying it or said it to benefit a particular audience that she reached. That subject almost came to an end very closely before the show concluded. Interesting. Back in 2009, we had Daz Smith, a forum member, who claimed to be an expert at remote viewing. So we thought, hey, let's put it to the test. And so we set up a test where he'd tell us what was hidden from him to give us some information. He passed the test. Oh, All right. The show was done April 26th, 2009. Now, for many thousands of reasons, he was never on again. I was about to put him on recently, and we just didn't get around to it. I'd like to, though, because that is something that's interesting. Interesting discussion. Test of remote viewing. On the other hand, we had someone else here who was talking to us about the Hieronymus box, the wishing machine. Lewis, you've heard about this? I have not. No. Okay. We had Joshua Warren, who claims to be one of those people who claims to be an expert a little over everything. And he had a manufacturing partner who built the wishing machine, the Hieronymus box. And I said, okay, I'll try it. They sent me one. For a time, I think it may have actually worked. I don't know. And then it didn't. Of course, I am moved now into a new location. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to plug it in and try it. Nothing can get worse. (laughs) Well, tell me about some other good guests that you've been impressed with, their research, their reasoning. Kevin Randall is always one of our favorite guests. He's a lot of fun to have on the show. And he's honest. He's brutally honest. He tells you what he thinks. That's good. We always like Don Ecker because he has a certain level of stories that he tells and he's always outspoken. He's a bit of a curmudgeon. That's okay. (laughs) Nick Redfern's a lot of fun because he writes a lot of fascinating books and he comes up with interesting ideas that start you thinking about things. He wrote one of the more compelling books with the alternate explanation about Roswell. So it's very important that we had him on the show. 
We also had a weird character on January 1st, a guy named Sean Correa, and he had his organization called Anonymous Uprising, where he hoped to raise a million dollars for some kind of UFO detection project. Now, as of the time we're doing this show, which is September 21st, he claimed to have raised $100,720. But one of those donations, $100,000 comes from an alleged offline source. All the other donations were, you know, $25, 50 $100. It's on GoFundMe. It's still there. I think once the venture is more than a few weeks old, it kind of dies off. The $100,000, I suspect, may not have been real. It may have been just put there in order to get other people to donate. Oh, look, we got somebody giving $100,000. Maybe someone will match it. The thing went nowhere. He made some claims about his background that we checked out. It seemed he was real, but really took us nowhere. So in some ways, that's an interesting episode because of the fact that it didn't do what we thought it would do. Lou, um, th- this is actually an interesting point. So, you know, as a, someone who's sort of been an observer of what goes on in the field, um, do you think that that any amount of money that we throw at the subject is really going to get us the the evidence that we need? Do you think that it, it's a problem is solvable by throwing bags of money at it? Um, I don't know that we could ever, if if in my imaging, in my imagination, somehow capturing one of these vehicles so that we could pull it apart and talk to the inhabitants. I don't know that that would take money. Supposedly, they're just technologically far in advance of us, whether it's technologically or they understand physics so much better that they can uh, dip and tuck in between dimensions, however you want to think of it. Uh, I, I do think, though, that would be better if the governments were to acknowledge the truth, because then I think there would be more uh, more possibility of making contact with other with the other other whatever, other entities, I'll put it that way. I, um, well. Why would you I say that? Ask if, uh, why do I think that? Yeah, why because would you say that that would I think increase? there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of, um, what's the word you want to use? The links and the nods that people who talk about this subject or are a little off base or, you know, uh, not well psychologically. And I think uh, that's been, at one, at least at one time, the government uh, encouraged that, and it's been picked up and just permeates our society, and that's unfortunate. I think, uh, unfortunately, also there are a lot of nutcases out there who grab onto the subject, who uh, use it to explain their behavior and their theories and their thoughts about life, and so that just pollutes the subject matter too. But if it were legit, legitimized. Um, I think it would, we would uh, be better able to pull apart and get real evidence and see where that might lead us. I, that's how I see it. I, I, um, I don't anticipate well, so, that so, in my lifetime. So you're not saying that that might sort of uh, provide a motivation to the aliens themselves to initiate contact like from that, their end? It could be. I, I realize um, you know, that almost fits in with the kind of uh, hierarchy of uh, events that Gene was alluding to that might take place. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I just do know that there's a lot of uh, disparaging comments out there. It just permeates our society. Um, even as recently as the Phoenix Lights, um, how, they, how they skewered the one politician for just asking honest questions and, for that matter, the governor felt that he had to keep a lid on it at first so it wouldn't be hysteria. And only years later did he admit that he himself had seen <laughs> the uh, uh, the craft himself, which which raises for me another question. Why are we not, with so many iPhones out there now or whatever, uh, phones that are capable of taking pictures, why are we not seeing a lot more pictures of these things? I'm not aware that we are. 
And with the internet, they should be all over the place. And that's just not happening. Right. Uh, but you remember here also, those. remember Lou also, mm -hmm. that most people using iPhones are not looking up, they're looking down. <laughs> and when they're looking up, they do capture things, their lights in the sky. You know, it's not that easy to take a photograph unless the craft or whatever it is is really close. If it's in the distance, it's just going to be a light in the sky. It could be anything. How many UFO photos are there that show something distinctive enough to present a mystery? Not that many. Well, there aren't that right. many aren't really, any. really, really good UFO photos. And because everybody has a phone in their pocket now, and Samsung makes good cameras too, so they do have the equipment with which to take those photos, but they're not looking up. And when they are, unless what they see is close enough and they remember to grab the camera in their pocket or whatever, you may not see something. We've got more to come with Louis Sheehan, Randall Murphy, Gene Steinberg. You're in the Paracast. <laughs> are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at rockoids.com. That's rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. It's a no-brainer. A Big Berkey water filter is the one you need, period. You need a water filter that removes chlorine, fluoride, pharmaceuticals, BPA, and other endocrine disruptors, pesticides, bacteria, viruses, and much more, right? And does it all at only two cents per gallon. Get the original and most trusted name in gravity water filtration, Big Berkey. And now GCN listeners receive 5% off ceramic filter systems using code GCN. Call or click 1-877-99-BERKEY or BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. You've heard the phrase, you are what you eat? Not true. Actually, you are what you can absorb. So if the vitamins and supplements you now take are not being absorbed, what good are they? Introducing Protovite, proprietary liquid system that allows premium quality nutrients to positively affect the blood in an astonishing five minutes. Watch our amazing two-minute live blood cell video at TrueHealthFacts.com. That's TrueHealthFacts.com. Then call 502-410-3411. Protovite is nutrition you can feel. Protovite is nutrition that gets in. You want to save money in a place that gives you growth, control, and certainty without stock market risk or tax risk, and you want guarantees and you want it all tax-free. That's a tall order. But you can get all of that with properly designed participating whole life insurance. Most people think life insurance pays after you're dead. That's true. But you can have tax-free access to use your life insurance while you're alive. Get the free book to find out how. Call 702-660-7000. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-765-9681 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-765-9681. Again, that's 800-765-9681. 
North Korea openly threatens the U.S. and launches a new missile every other week. Their warhead of choice? Electromagnetic pulse. Such an event would cripple the U.S. power grid for years and leave millions in the dark. Are you ready? You can be with a Solark EMP-hardened solar generator. Solark works day in and day out to keep your essentials protected. You can have peace of mind knowing your power will be there when you most need it. Visit PortableSolarLLC.com to see EMP testing. That's PortableSolarLLC.com. Energy insurance for your family. Hi, this is Nick Pope. You're listening to the Paracast. What's your feeling about that, Randall Murphy, about the dearth of useful photos in light of the fact that a billion people have pretty good cameras now? Yeah, interesting question. I was just talking with uh, someone the other day who uh, was telling me that they were sitting in traffic and they saw craft in the sky very clearly, but there's this sort of uh, awe factor, this sort of flabbergasting thing like, you know, am I really seeing what I'm seeing? And he had a phone right next to him and didn't take any pictures. And this is someone who comes across to me as is fairly believable. And, you know, I have no way to prove one way or the other, but seeing something like that really is kind of an awe-inspiring sight. I mean, I know I've seen one myself, so have a number of other people. And and thinking of digging out your phone and is just sort of becomes waylaid as a priority to just experiencing and watching the thing. Well, Gene, more good guests that you've had on? It's one of those things where there's no one guest. There's a whole bunch of guests that you liked, you enjoyed the interaction. And so therefore, we had good times with them. And we like to have them back. Chris Rutkowski, the Canadian UFO researcher, is just great. Because you think of him when you talk to him as a pretty straight-laced guy, and he's very funny. I like the British UFO researchers because they have such an enlightened view of the subject, like Philip Mantle. Greg Bishop is great because he is willing to consider all sorts of possibilities. He doesn't just believe, he questions and he talks and he allows people to have their say. I was glad to get Whitley Strieber on the show after 10 years of the PowerCast in February of last year. I was disappointed that he didn't convince us of anything. I had heard him speak a couple of times in New York at a New York Fortean Society lecture where John Keel and Tim Beckley were running the shows back in the early 90s. And I don't know about Streber. I think something may have really happened to him. But some people say he's just doing it to sell books. That might be pushing it. You know, Nick Redfern, um, I once spoke with him. I I call into shows um, like I'm doing today. And I asked him in part why he was so interested in the subject. And part of the reason was when he was growing up, his father was in the uh, United Kingdom's military, and he participated in a large NATO exercise called Operation Main Brace. And his father was involved with radars. And they found they, they picked up a lot of UFOs on radars during the, those military exercises, a lot of headlines and papers back from that era. And uh, I just think uh, that's interesting. I always like to know why someone is interested in UFOs. And I know that was a question thrown in my direction uh, when I called into this show. Uh, But I think it's something that should be asked of every guest that you have, why it is that they're so interested and they're willing to uh, even risk their reputation by delving into the subject. And I believe your former... Your former co-host may have may have bowed out in part because he felt that it was just hurting his reputation and not getting him anything for it. So I, I do think it's an interesting question to ask everyone that you bring on. So I would urge you to do that in the future. So that'll save me from um, posting that question in your forum week after week. And uh, I want also to mention, I'm going to throw you a softball pitch, but I asked you this question about a week ago. How easy is it to download the Paracast Plus onto your mobile phone? Go ahead and tell us how easy it is. I'm not a techie, so it doesn't sound easy to me, but go ahead and tell us how easy it is. It's very easy. You set it up once and that's automatic. And to set it up, you have to add the podcast using the URL that we give you when you sign up for Paracast Plus. We give you a custom URL And it's not an iTunes URL. It goes directly to our site. But it doesn't matter. Just copy-paste. You will then be asked to log in. 
The login name is your forum name plus your forum password. Once you log in, it becomes part of your podcast in Apple's podcast app and Downcast and other apps. Android, there are a number of apps that do it too. And once you do that, it will update just like anything else automatically or you pull it down and it updates. That's all. It's can not, I it's not a big computer, deal. But can I subscribe on my computer and then listen to it on my phone? Yeah. Okay. You have an iPhone, right? Or what I kind do. of phone? Okay. iPhone. Uh, 5S. I'm, 5S, as a matter of fact. Pardon? 5S? Okay, doesn't matter. 5S. Okay. I have an iPhone right here. And this iPhone is running iOS 11, which your iPhone can do too. We have only a couple of minutes left, so I want to do this really right. quickly here. Okay. There is this app. Mm -hmm. There's this podcast app, and you launch podcasts, okay? And there's a way in there, and I have to look at how it's done. There's a way in there where you can add the podcast and have it update. Now, I have to look at the new interface here because it's a little different. I think you have to go to your library... Okay, here's how you do it. You go to Podcasts, tap Library, tap Edit, and then there's an option, Add a Podcast by URL. And you paste the URL that we give you. When you sign up, we send you a letter. You paste it there, tap Subscribe. You then log into the forum, and that's how you get the Paracast Plus, just like that, or Tech Night Out Plus. If you join that too. And do I do that on my phone or could I do, do it, it on, on your phone? Yeah, I do it on your phone because okay. if you do it in iTunes, it'll only be in iTunes. You can do it on iTunes on your Mac okay. or a PC. But on remember, again, it's a manual edition. Podcast app. Choose library. When you choose library, you then tap edit. And when you tap edit, add a podcast by URL. The whole process will take you less than a minute. So in the future, for your future shows, when you and uh, Chris are, are co-hosting, remember to ask your guests why they're interested in the subject. Do me a favor and find out from Paul Kimball, get the critique of his own movie, what he now sees as having been um, unhelpful. Hopefully we'll prepare for a Stan Friedman grilling. Uh, again, I'm a, I like the guy. I respect the guy greatly. So... To say grilling, he does deserve hard questions. Uh, he's quite enough to, to entertain them. And considering having Hastings on to talk about his movie and perhaps more chapters in his book, Beyond the UFOs and Nukes, uh, because he has other interesting writings, including about Bent Waters, which arguably is not involving nuclear weapons. Uh, maybe it is. And I want to thank you for allowing a, a random listener to call in and ask a lot of questions that have been going through his mind over the past few years. Let me answer you briefly about Robert Hastings. He mm -hmm. got ragged on in the forum something fierce. At the time, there's some people who were against his ideas and posted their objections in an objectionable way, if you get my point. He may not, right. as a result, want to come back on the show. It's unfortunate that happens sometimes. As to Paul Kimball, he'll be back soon. Maybe we'll give you the opportunity to ask him yourself. How's that work for you? Oh, that's fine. That's fine by me. Okay. Well, what do you do for a living, by the way? I, I uh, It's a long story, uh, but I'm currently working for it. Uh, what was St. Jude Medical. It's now Abbott, and they, they make pacemakers and so forth, and I'm involved with filings with the FDA. I was a lawyer for decades. I changed careers, um, and sometimes I question why in retrospect because I was making much more money. <laughs> but I wanted to do something different, so I went back to school and got a degree in biotechnology. I'm trying to uh, carve out a new niche for myself in the, uh, in the sciences. Good luck with it. Good luck with the future. You can find us on Twitter if you look for the PowerCast. Look for two PowerCast fan clubs on Facebook. One of them is a group. The other is a community. Isn't that weird? Whatever you like. We have a second radio show, of course, called After the Powercast. After the Powercast is part of the Powercast Plus. To learn more, go to plus.thepowercast.com. That's P-L-U-S dot thepowercast.com. For a low subscription rate, we give you After the Powercast, a version of this show free of network ads. 
and lots of other benefits. And if you join for five years or 10 years, you'll get a free book or two. We have several that we offer. Supplies are limited. Plus dot the powercast.com. Our special guest host, of course, was J. Randall Murphy. We welcome loyal listener Louis Sheehan. And you know he can talk well because he is a lawyer. That explains a lot. Lou, thanks for joining us on the Paracast. And thank you. Thanks for allowing me to participate. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in The Paracast. <laughs>